Hello everyone in Cyber World. Welcome back to another video. I'm Richard. And I'm Jennifer. And this is our channel we call Poor Man's DIY. Uh, this was not originally intended to be a two-part uh, series, but last week uh, we ran into some uh, significant problems due to some measuring errors on someone's part. <laughs> and so let's take a little recap of what we did wrong. The original reason we built the light boxes is because we saw James at Fix-It Fingers build these. We purchased two new lights for the newly built laundry area. The two new lights will go along with the six lights that we already had hanging. We measured the new lights and built the boxes accordingly. Then the epic failed happened, the old lights did not fit the newly built boxes. So as you might imagine, that was kind of gut-wrenching uh, to think that I mismeasured everything. I had all these things built and was ready to go and figured the project was done, all for nothing. Well this week we're going to show you how we fixed the problem and then we're going to show you how we finished the project. But remember, Hit the subscribe button if you enjoy this content. So Mr. Poorman had to think about how he was going to resolve the issue. It turned out the old lights were not only wider, but they were actually taller as well. So we're going to have to do some planing to get the wood to fit. We are cutting wider pieces to fit the older lights. Then I cut out a notch for the power cord. And now for the really depressing part, disassembling the new boxes that I just got done building. It turns out the brad nails, glue, and the wood filler I used made it extremely difficult to take apart. So to make this task a little easier, I brought out the Makita Oscillating Multi-Tool. Mr. Portman had to sand down the disassembled parts that were damaged. Now it's just a matter of reassembling everything with the properly measured pieces of wood.
This time we decided to paint with the roller and the brush. I made a simple little jig, in essence putting blocks on both ends of the boxes, and then using frog tape, I measured and marked where the brackets will be placed on each box. We added Velcro to the lights to secure the lights to the boxes. The reason for this is so that the lights won't move inside the box itself. We made the boxes a little bit longer in order to place the excess cable inside. Finally, we get to install the light boxes on the ceiling. All things considered, it turned out really nicely. Uh, we now have eight lights in our garage, including one over our new design uh, sink. And uh, even when we close the doors, daytime or night, it lights up the entire garage and we can see everything and even do some filming without any problems. Next week's video, we're gonna show you what we built for our 3D models. But until then, bye-bye.